Subscribe for daily IELTS material. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and an overseas shipping agent. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 8. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon, Denham's Shipping. How can I be of service? Well, I wish to inquire about sending a container of personal items from the UK to Ireland. The customer wants to send his container to Ireland. So the country of destination is Ireland. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. Good afternoon, Denham Shipping. How can I be of service? Well, I wish to inquire about sending a container of personal items from the UK to Ireland. No problem. Would you like me to give you an estimate of the cost? Yes, please. Well, first of all, may I take your details? Of course. My name's Tim Lafferty. Could you spell your surname for me, please, Tim? Yes, it's Lafferty. L-A-F-F-E-R-T-Y. Thank you, Tim. Now, where would you like us to pick your container up from? My university, if possible. OK. Let me make a note of the address. It's Abbeyfield University. Is that A... B B E Y F I E L D. That's right. Park Street, Brighton. Perfect. And may I take down your postcode too? It's B R 8 9 P 3. Great. Thank you, Tim. Have you the container's measurements? I do. It's approximately. 2.5 metres long by 1.25 metres wide. I see. Quite a big one then. Indeed. And the height? I make it a metre and 20 centimetres deep. So that's 2.5 by 1.25 by 1.2. Right. And what will actually be in the box, Tim? Oh, mostly old uni books. OK. And some music albums. Anything else? Yes, a little bit of stationery. I see. And could you put an estimate on the value of the items? The books are quite valuable. They're worth around £1,800. The music albums, maybe half that, say £900. And you can put the stationery down as £300. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 9 and 10. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 9 and 10. OK. And will you be purchasing contents cover from us also? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry, let me explain. Because your items are worth more than £2,000, we recommend that you purchase insurance to cover yourself in the event of damage or loss. Makes sense. What are my options? 
Well, we offer three insurance deals, the premium rate, standard rate and economy rate ones. Premium offers full cover in the event of loss, damage or theft, which means you would be provided with the full cost of replacing your belongings. What about standard and economy? Standard will give you today's value the second-hand value of your belongings, and economy provides you with a fixed payment of £1,000 in the event of loss, damage or theft. Well, I can afford to live without those books, to be honest, so just give me the cheapest option. We recommend standard cover for all our customers. No, thank you. That won't be necessary. The cheapest option will be fine. No problem. And one last thing, will you be needing delivery at your office, at your house, or do you intend to pick up your container at the port? Home delivery would suit me best, I think. We'll get that process for you. That's the end of section one. You have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now turn to section two. Section 2. You will hear a tour guide talking to her tour group. First, you will have time to look at questions 11 to 15. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Well, we certainly have a busy day ahead of us, so let's get started, shall we? You'll find a map of the museum with the itinerary I've just handed out. The museum's our first port of call, so uh, let's have a look at the map now. The door on the right of the entrance hall leads into the gift shop and ticket centre. Once we pick up our entrance tickets, I'd ask everyone to deposit their bags and coats in the cloakroom, which is located towards the back of the gift shop and ticket centre. If you want to pick up an information leaflet, you can approach the information desk situated along the right-hand side. Now, once you come back into the entrance hall, the door on the opposite side to the gift shop leads into the art gallery. There is a special exhibition on there at the moment which is not to be missed. If you continue on up the entrance hallway, that leads into the main exhibition centre. At the back left-hand side, there are some toilets. Beside the toilets, you'll find the 3D theatre. I strongly recommend that you make time for the 30-minute presentation in the theatre. It is well worth a viewing. Running along the right-hand side of the main exhibition centre is the Modern Art Studio. Here, not only can you view some of the most famous works of the 20th century, but you can also sit in on a workshop run by a local artist. So, that's the art museum. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Next on the itinerary is the aquarium. Depending on how long we spend at the museum, we might have to give this one a miss. It's not what I'd call a highlight of the day, but it would be a shame if we didn't get to see it, as it's en route to the Solheim Country Club, where we're booked in for lunch at one o'clock. Originally, we had planned to stop off at the Milltown Winery afterwards, but we've had to scrap that plan, otherwise we'd never get to the zoological gardens before closing time. We have pre-booked the gardens and must be there by 2.30, so no dilly-dallying please after lunch. Straight back onto the bus. The gardens close at 3.30, so we've an hour there which should give us ample time to look around. Time allowing, we'll stop off at the famous Stout Brewery after that, if traffic isn't too heavy, and we're in Lincoln before five. If not, we'll head straight for the National Concert Hall, where you're in for a real treat of an evening, 
with a performance from the world-renowned cellist Andre Borovsky. We have to be in our seats by 6.30 sharp. After that, it's back to the hotel for the night where a buffet meal will be waiting for us at half eight, or whenever we get back. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now turn to section three. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between two design students and their tutor on a practical assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. So, have you chosen a product yet? I think so. We'd like to build a gyroscopic exercise aid. Sounds interesting. Tell me more. Well, uh, we did some research and were amazed to discover the sheer range of applications for gyroscopic technology. Gyroscopes are used in laser and optical devices and can be found in many consumer appliances too. Right. Tell me about this product specifically though. The aim of the assignment is to create something practical, functional and beneficial for consumers. Justify your decision. Well, we believe we can design and build a cheap and effective muscle strengthening aid by taking advantage of the inertial forces created by a gyroscope. Yes. What we want to do is design a ball which can be held in the palm. Within the ball, there will be a simple gyroscope. This gyroscope can be set in motion by movement of the lower arm and wrist together in sync. The device will not require any external power source because it will be sustained by the movement of the arm and wrist. This will create considerable resistance and an excellent lower arm strengthening aid. It will be simple to design and cheap to produce, yet extremely effective. This all sounds very good. I'm impressed. Thanks, Mark. We're glad you like it. I think we're really on to something here. Our research has told us there's nothing comparable in the market and that a product like this would have multiple uses. Not only could it be used as an everyday toning and exercise device, it could also be beneficial to people in rehabilitation who have suffered serious lower arm injuries. We see the product being marketed towards high-performance athletes like tennis and golf players, for whom lower arm strength is vital too. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. I've heard enough to give your project the go-ahead. Now, Let's talk costs. Right. Well, we estimate that around £3,000 will be required for product development. You mean to build the prototype? Exactly. And we'll need half that again to carry out some product testing. And what's your timeline for the project? Mm, the prototype should be ready a fortnight after work on the design starts, and we'll need another six weeks for testing. We want to enlist the help of 15 people to test the prototype. Ideally, we want five professional athletes to try it out, five recovery patients, and the remainder of the subjects will be gym members, our three target markets. OK. Well, you have a lot of work to do, but you've certainly made a good start. Let's meet again on Monday to get the ball rolling. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear part of a lecture about public speaking. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Pause the recording for one minute. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. It is only natural to feel somewhat nervous before giving a speech. And while a few nerves never did any harm and can in fact prove beneficial, letting your nerves overcome you can be detrimental. Today's presentation will focus on ways to control those butterflies and help you to give better presentations in future. First and foremost, you've got to know your material. I can't stress that enough. If you fail to prepare, you might as well prepare to fail. Even the most experienced speakers never turn up unprepared and never try to wing it. Personalise your subject and use humour, anecdotes and conversational language. This will make it easier for you to remember what you want to say. Secondly, practice, practice, practice. Rehearse well in advance and preferably out loud and with all the equipment you plan on using. Practice your timing, when to pause and when to breathe and prepare for the unexpected. Something always goes wrong, especially when you're relying on technology. So always have a backup plan. Get to know your audience before you have to stand up in front of them. Meet and greet them on the way in, perhaps. It is much easier to talk to a group of friends than a group of strangers. And, just as importantly, know your room as well. Arrive early, pace the speaking area and practice using the microphone and visual aids. The hardest part is trying to relax. Never rush straight into your speech. Begin slowly and address the audience first. In fact, even before you start, take a few deep breaths. You know, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. This will turn your nervous energy into enthusiasm. Visualisation can be a great confidence booster. Visualise yourself making the speech in the way that you intend. Imagine your voice loud and confident and picture the audience clapping and rooting for you. Remember, people want you to succeed. The audience wants to hear an interesting and insightful speech. They aren't hoping you make a fool of yourself. Whatever you do, avoid making unnecessary apologies. If you make a mistake or two, forget about it. Few will notice and it will all be forgotten before too long. People often forget the importance of body language. Don't underestimate this. Your words carry far less meaning than your delivery. Success is defined by your intonation and confidence. If you come across as a confident person, people will listen to you. You will command their attention. Stand tall and proud and deliver with conviction. Humans are very bad listeners. We remember less than 25% of what is said and place far more emphasis on how it is said. Last of all, be realistic and give yourself a chance. No one becomes the perfect speaker overnight. It takes time to hone your presentation skills. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Pause the recording for 30 seconds. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.